What is up everybody? Welcome back to Formula 1 2006 World Championship Mode. I'm your host Sam RTX, and in the last video we did the Nürburgring in Europe. And we scored a podium in a very um, tight fight against the Ferraris, the Renaults and Montoya. But we held up to get third. Here's the standings which Alonso leads after winning the European Grand Prix and his free put out of Michael Schumacher with Master of Prince Keller in third and fourth. We've moved up to sixth in the championship ahead of Montoya. Kimi Raikkonen has moved out of the um, top eight as he's still struggling on eight points. Well, um, what else was new to a boot? Uh, nothing else really, apart from the fact that Montoya scored points. But in the Constructors' battle, um, Renault and Ferrari are still duking it out as only two points separates them. With um, Honda um, 28 points, with McLaren 8 points down the road, and Super Aguri 7 points behind them. There's Toyota with um, 4 points in 6th, Red Bull in 7th with um, 2. Sauber and Williams are both on 1 point, so the Midlands and the Scuderia Toro Rosso team are yet to score. Which is unfortunate for both teams, but I'm pretty sure they will eventually. But for now, we're going to go to the qualifying session and let James Allen cover the um, qualifying coverage. So take it away, James. We're at the wonderful Circuit de Catalunya, just outside Barcelona, for Saturday qualifying. The opening knockout session is about to begin. It's UGE Day who is first out onto the circuit. Thank you, James, and that is our teammates that is um, ready to take the um, session. He's ready to kick things off, but we're going to follow him out on the track because, well, we want to put in a lap. I do admit Spain is not really my strongest track ever, but um, we'll try and uh, make a big thing out of it. We're currently 10th place, and it should be good enough. We're 11th right now, actually. We're moving down the pecking order very fast because our lap wasn't really that competitive. But you join us um, as we are um, one second faster than um, our previous best in the second sector. So we're about to put in a lap here. We've ran wide, so that should take time off us, but I don't think that should be enough to um, actually um, jeopardize our lap. But it will be a b improvement to what our previous lap was, which I believe was a 120.7 um, 120 actually. We'll continue in a few moments with the second knockout session, where we'll decide grid positions 16 to 11. My goodness, we just about made that. We're 15th. I'm really unhappy with that lap, but it was enough. And um, Christian Kleen is actually the casualty that's um, out of this session, while Ede and Albers are the two that is at the back row. But we've got to be a bit. We've got to improve much more than what we were doing. Otherwise, we'll be eliminated out of the qualifying session um, for the first time. We won't make Q3. My goal is to always make Q3, so um, hopefully we can make it. But at the moment, I'm not really too optimistic with this car. And I'm not optimistic with my ability, considering it's been a while since I last drove around um, the Barcelona circuit. But um, hopefully we do make it. Right, you do join us as we are. Um, we do have two and a half minutes left to put in a lap. We are currently 16th. Um, our previous lap was really bad, if I'm honest with you. It was because uh, um, we ran wide and because we got held up, we had to abandon it. Mostly, um, we were doing good in the uh, previous sector, but um, because we were being held up by Giancarlo Fisichella, of all people, um, and Montoya, uh, they, uh, to be honest with you, we had to abandon the lap, and it really took a lot of time. Our first sector is equal to our um, previous best, so we're currently doing okay, actually. Our first sector is always okay. It's the second sector where I really lose a lot of time, if I'm pretty, if I'm honest with you. The second sector, I always tend to mess up, so... Um, our goal is to try and um, do a better um, sector in the um, better um, sector in the second sector. You know, better time in the second sector. That's what I was trying to say. But obviously, I muddled up my commentary. But yes, um, the title does not fool you, everybody. This is a two um, race. This is a two race video, and um, yeah, you will understand why it's a two race video. And we had a little wheel spin at the back, which. Probably will cost us some time, but we're doing good um, considering how well um, our sectors have been. We're currently a second faster than our previous best. How will this be? Will it be enough to get us through? The answer is no. We got a 19, 119.995, and we're only 14th. And that's put us out of the we'll session. Continue with session three of qualifying in a few moments. We are out of Q3 for the first time this season. We will be starting 14th on the grid. Uh, Mark Webber and Nico Rosberg will share the 8th row of the grid. We do start behind Jack Villeneuve, unfortunately. And um, DC and Nick Heidfeld are also the casualties. So both Toyotas make the um, qualifying 3. 
So Rav Schumacher just about made it at my expense, to be honest, because um, my third sector was pretty messy. But let's see who gets the um, top 10. We shall um, give it to James Allen right so there we now. It. From 10th to pole, the grid order looks like this. Thoroughly enjoyable qualifying session today. All that remains for me to say is see you tomorrow for another scintillating, action-packed Grand Prix. It's been an underwhelming season for Kimi Raikkonen so far, so this pole position is very important for him. With Fizzy Keller in second, Michael Schumacher third, Massa fourth, Barry Keller fifth, Button sixth, Montoya seventh, Alonso eighth, and the two Toyotas ninth and tenth. So, there's your top ten. And we are going to go to Martin Brundle, who's going to um, cover the grid. So, I'm looking forward to this race. I do start in the midfield, so i got to be very careful with the way I drive up as risk having a crash. But anyway, Martin Brundle you got to take it away from us. Hello and welcome to Barcelona, the home of the Spanish Grand Prix. During the win, spend a large amount of their time preparing and testing for the season ahead, and as a result, all the drivers are extremely familiar with the circuit layout. It's a fairly technical circuit, and there aren't many overtaking opportunities around the twisting central sections. For Fernando Alonso, this is his home Grand Prix and there is huge support from the home fans that have come just to cheer on their hero. It's a clear day here at the moment, good visibility for the drivers. Kimi Raikkonen heads the field. Next on the front row is Giancarlo Fisichella. Third is Michael Schumacher. Massa fourth. Rubens Barrichello goes from fifth. Jensen Button completes the third row. 7th place for Juan Pablo Montoya. Fernando Alonso rounds off the top 8. Thank you Martin and that is where Fernando Alonso is in fact starting. Now you join us at the grid as we do warm up our tyres except our front ones which um, always is a problem for us. The rear tyres is always heat up but the advantage is that we just joined the grid so when the fire flights go out it is race time. It is racing in Barcelona here in the Catalonia circuit and we are racing here. There's a great start by Takuma Sato who easily overtakes Jack Villeneuve and David Coulthard and Nick Heidfeld for um, P11 and he's now behind the Toyotas. It's a brilliant start by the Super Aguri driver as he's um, gone around Ralph Schumacher's inside and he's overtaken both Trulli and Schumacher. Now next it's Fernando Alonso, the local hero here. And contact! No front wing damage or no uh, puncture for either driver and um, looks like he's going to be chasing Fernando Alonso for P8. Or is he? And we're out of the race. I don't believe this. A third engine failure. Are you for real, game? Anyway, we have a team radio about to come up. Frustration indeed, but team radio um, in about a few seconds. That's all we can say. Why does it happen to us all the time? This We're going for our fourth engine. And this is only race six. Another DNF. I don't believe this. This is painful. Like, imagine me being in a competitive car. I could actually be competing with these guys. But um, my reliability issues has unfortunately put me down, you know. My championship's over before it even started. To be honest, I knew this was going to happen. An amazing location with an amazing crowd. This has to be one of the best attended races in the whole F1 calendar. The Spanish fans love Fernando Alonso and love their F1. It's been a pleasure to be here this weekend and I have to say a big thank you for all that our passionate Spanish hosts have had to offer. I'll leave you with the thought that in two weeks' time we arrive at the most glamorous location of them all, Monaco. I can't wait. I hope you'll join us there. Goodbye from Barcelona. We'll see you soon. Well, um, it's a win for Felipe Massa with Fernando Alonso finishing second. So the home crowd got what they wanted, the podium from their hometown hero. And Michael Schumacher got third place. And Kimi Raikkonen got a well-needed fourth place as his struggles for points was continuing until now. So he's got points on the board finally. Montoya unfortunately finished out the points, but Jensen Button and Jano Trulli and um, I think um, Barry Keller rounded off the um, top, ten, uh, top eight. Sorry. Um... So yeah, it's disappointing again, retirement with the engine failure. So Alonso leads Massa by three points, and Michael Schumacher trailing five points down the line, and Fisichella didn't score any points, so unfortunately he um, suffers. Kimi Raikkonen's moved into the top um, ten, Montoya's moved down to ninth, 
and truly um, stays in 10th with 6 points. And Nick Heidfeld actually got more points for the BMW Sauber after finishing 8th place. I did say Barrichello, my bad, it was Nick Heidfeld. I'm just too frustrated to look at the, um, you know, who finished where, because I'm disappointed. And Ferrari lead the Renault team by 6 points in the Constructors' Championship, with Honda extending their lead over McLaren to 10 points in the Constructors. So now we are going to go to Monaco, where um, we're going to have to do another race there, because um, this video is just too damn short thanks to an engine failure. Welcome to Monte Carlo for Saturday's one-hour qualifying session. We're about to get underway, and with the tight streets and twisting nature of this circuit, it's likely to be an extremely busy 15 minutes. First out onto the track today is Christian Albers. Thank you, James. I gotta admit, Monaco is really a track I despise the most because I just can't drive around this track. This track is too tight. It's either I finish outside the points or just retirement. And it's rain, so this makes it even worse. You join us um, as we're about to finish the second sector, and um, well, um, to get into the um, next session, we have to get a 122 to say the least to get in there. But unfortunately for me, this track is just not my favourite. I, I don't. I just don't like it. Just um, I know everyone has their favourite tracks. This is just not my favourite. We even hit the wall um, towards um, heading out towards Raskas, and here's the final start finish straight. Is it enough to um, qualify in the um, next round of the um, qualifying session? And I'll give you that answer. Well, I'm going to tell you the answer in a minute, but for now, um, it's a 122.3 and it's put us in 7th place, but will it be enough for us to qualify in the um, next session? The answer is... We'll continue in no. a few moments with the second knockout session, where we'll decide grid positions 16 to 11. Our humiliation continues as we... Um, Exited um, Q2 for the um, first time in the last race. Now we're out of Q1. Our humiliating um, video continues. Um, I just hope that we can have a solid race. Because, um, I mean, I just want points. Or I just want a good finish here. But I'm starting 18th. That's a dangerous place to start in this track. You know, anything can happen in turn one. That's all I'm going to say in this track. So, I don't know what's going to happen. But I hope I can make up a lot of places and actually compete because I do want to finish this race. I want to try and do as good as I can around Monaco, because Monaco is just one of those tracks that I want to do well in. You know, when you're bad at a track, you want to do well. Anyway, let's go to the next session, which is Q2, and um, check who got eliminated there. Um, we're going to have James Allen um, cover the coverage of who got eliminated. We'll continue with session three of qualifying in a few moments. And to top things off, my rival in this series is Jack Vilner, because I just don't like him. And he's 11th. David Coulthard, Liuzzi, Weber, Ralph Schumacher, and Trulli also out. Wait, did Clean make the next session? So there we have it. From 10th to pole, the grid order looks like this. We've enjoyed it. Hope you have too. We'll see you tomorrow for race day. Goodbye. Oh, it's Nico Rosberg that made the next session. My goodness, he's P5 in Monaco. Wow. I have some of them apples. Well, even though he's a three-time winner here, actually, in the future. He won it three times in a row. But Alonso's first place, no surprise there. Jensen Button second with Massa third. Fisichella fourth. Rosberg fifth. Barrichello sixth. Schumacher seventh. Heifel eighth. Montoya ninth. Kimi Raikkonen tenth. Disappointing um, fifth row start for the McLarens. That's nothing new there. We're going to have Martin Brundle cover the Monaco coverage because um, he's going to tell us the grid positions, even though we already know them. But Martin Brundle always likes to tell us about them, the glamour that is Monaco. So, Martin... You can take it away, because I'm not going to do much talking, because I do want to focus ahead of this race. So, um, Martin Brando. Here we are then in Monte Carlo for what we hope will be another action-packed Monaco Grand Prix. The Monaco Grand Prix is the most famous and glamorous race on the Formula One calendar. The small principality first hosted a Grand Prix way back in 1929, before the official world championship began. Formula One cars have now outgrown the tight confines of the Monaco streets, but it's still an amazing sight to see the best drivers in the world weaving their way between the barriers. A good grid position here is vital, as the tight street circuit makes overtaking very difficult indeed. Conditions are just about perfect here today. Clear skies and perfect temperatures on and off the track. The forecast is also good, and we expect it to stay like this for the whole race. Lining up on pole is Fernando Alonso. 
Jensen Button is alongside him on the front row. Felipe Massa is in third. Giancarlo Fisichella completes row two. Nico Rosberg fifth. Sixth is Rubens Barrichello. Michael Schumacher lines up in seventh. Heidfeld will start from eighth. Cheers, Martin, for the um, grid. Now we're going to um, be joining um, as we are now lined up on the grid in P18. With Christian Clean in front of us, no less, and um, Liuzzi in front of us. Well, Liuzzi in front of us, and Clean is also on the um, other side. So when the five lights go out, it's race time in Monaco. We are on the neutral as we put our um, hands on the accelerator, and we are racing. It's a brilliant start by Takuma Sato, who's overtaken both Liuzzi and Clean, and he's overtaken David Coulthard and Mark Webber, and he's also take overtaken Jack Vernon, and there's contact. Mark Webber's pulled Sato into the barriers. And another retirement! Would you believe that? Jack Villeneuve and Mark Webber have double teamed me into the barriers. And there you go. I am out before the first lap has even been completed. I told you to. I'm out! Crash! Somebody hit me in the rear! Honestly, what the f are we doing here? I'm going home! I told you! I told you turn one is going to be carnage. And my. Oh, God. And that's how I feel again. I just want to go home. Then again, I am home. But that's not the point. This is the worst races I've ever done. Mostly because of reliability. And then Jack Villeneuve and Mark Webber just plowed me into the wall. I wanted to race around this track. I'm not kidding. As much as I dislike it, I had a good start. I was in a good position. This is outrageous. I, I just can't wait for the next race. From the highs of the Nürburgring to the lows of these previous two races. No points. I'm actually devastated. I, I went from two podiums. Well, I went from a podium in Europe to re engine failure and now a crash. It's just, it's just terrible. I don't know. It's like this team's cursed with the reliability issues. I hope the next race does not give me another engine failure. I've already had terrible races here. I need a proper good race in Silverstone next. But man, oh man, I am furious, as you can tell in my voice. Another retirement. Oh my god. Scott Speed? Oh my god, he got fourth! Silverstone could almost be considered the home GP of no less than six teams. McLaren, Renault, Williams, Honda, Red Bull and Midland F1 are all based in the UK. And you can be assured of a very special weekend of racing. We'll see you there in June. Thanks for joining us. Take care and goodbye. Well, look at that. Karma struck both Mark Webber and Jack Villeneuve as they retired. The McLaren's got lapped. And Alba's got his first point. What a cr I missed out on one of the craziest races. See, Scott Speed got fourth place. Alba's got one point. Clean got points. I mi what happened there? I missed out. Big time. I just button got podium. So I've dropped to seventh. Not really, not really that bad. I was only sixth. And um, Speed's on five points. Clean's on three points. Alba's on one point. So every team has scored points. And um, 16 drivers has officially scored points in this. Ralph Schumacher's yet to score. Disappointing Ralph Schumacher. Jack Villeneuve's yet to score. Who cares? That's he deserves not to score after what he did to me. And Renault and Ferrari are both on 86 points heading into Silverstone. And Honda's two times more points down the road in 43. And McLaren did not score. They got lapped, so their misery continues in the, um, this season. And um, Toro Rosso moved up. As they are in 7th, I believe. And um, Midland and Williams are joint last. Wow. So, the British Grand Prix is next. I do hope, for my sake, I have a better race than the last two races. What a nightmare. I'm telling you, that was a nightmare. I do not want to be involved in a turn 1 crash again for the rest of the season. I want a, a good engine again. That was my. This is my f uh, fourth engine this season. And it's just not good enough. I'm just um, having reliability issues out of um, everywhere. And I just felt frustrated. So, yeah, I just really want a good race here in um, Silverstone. 
It's my hometown race, even though I'm in Takuma Sato shoes, but I'm British, so yeah, it's my home race, and I want to do well in Silverstone. Again, Silverstone's not my um, favourite track, but um, I want to respond, you know, especially after the two disappointing races in Spain and Monaco. Oh, God. But I am sorry for the um, lack of racing in this video, but I hope you enjoyed my little team radio rant and my gifts and whatnot. I hope you enjoyed all of that stuff. I'm making fun of myself at my own demise, but anyway, this is where I'm going to end the video, um, because... Um, Silverstone is next, so this is Samurai DX signing out. Until then, until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next race in Silverstone. Take care, everybody. See ya.